uh, then it means that this House is not getting good service. Question number three, the Honourable Amy Adams. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Transport. Has he seen reports that 41 per cent of households with income below the average level are now spending less on essential items like food and power because of higher petrol prices? If so, will he reconsider the two further petrol tax increases planned this term? The Honourable Phil Twyford. Yes and no. Why is he going to continue to increase petrol taxes when 40 per cent of low-income families are having to go without essentials like food and power because of those high petrol prices? This government is taking action on petrol prices and forcing the petrol companies to expose their margins. We're getting the evidence that we need to sort this out because no one wants to see Kiwis paying more at the pump than they need to. But despite the members' consistent scaremongering, it's still true that most of the increase by a country mile in petrol prices has come from increases in international crude prices, a falling dollar and importer margins rather than taxes. Well, does he think it's scaremongering to suggest that petrol prices uh, petrol taxes are regressive and disproportionately hurt lower income households the most. Well, the lack of a decent transport system and the crippling infrastructure deficit that we inherited after nine years of that government, that is highly regressive and punishes poor people. This government's committed to reversing that deficit and investing in the infrastructure that our towns and cities need to be livable and to support the economic growth that that party allowed to wither on the vine for nine years. Does he agree with Treasury, who advised him clearly that increasing petrol taxes has, and I quote, a negative impact on the welfare of low-income households? Yes, and I also agree with Treasury's analysis of the effects of the families package, which put $75 a week, on average, into the household budgets of 384,000 low- and middle-income families. Alongside that, we're investing in modern transport systems to give people real choice, particularly in our cities. Well, is he aware that that survey that showed 40 per cent of low-income households now having to go without essentials because of higher petrol prices and taxes came after the family's income package, which hasn't stopped them having to give up on food and energy and other essentials because of the taxes imposed by that government? Well, Mr Speaker, the Colmar Brunton report had some excellent information in it. It also included information that the Labour Party had overtaken the National Party in terms of the party vote, that New Zealand First and the Greens are doing exceptionally well, and the government's on 57 per cent. Point of order, Mr Speaker. Yeah, yes, I'm, I, I think I missed the relevance. Is that, is that the, of the reply? Is that... Are you, well, if you're asking me whether I think the Minister addressed the question, I don't think he came anywhere near to it. Well, no, nor do I. Ask it again. We'll well, Mr Speaker, time. thank you. I will. Uh, is he aware, then, that the survey quoted in the primary question that showed 40 per cent of low-income households are now going without essentials like food and power because of higher petrol taxes was taken after the full impact of the families? of the family's income package, and that despite that package, those low-income households are still going without essentials because of higher petrol prices and taxes. I don't know why the member says despite that package. That package delivered $75 a week into the pockets of 384,000 low- and middle-income families. She can't just wave that away by saying despite that. The best analysis on the effects of fuel tax increases was done by MB, and MB calculated that, the, on average, those fuel tax increases would, would by, by no more than an average of $5 a week, increase fuel prices. Most of the increase 
in fuel consumption, the cost of fuel consumption has been caused by a falling dollar, oil prices and importer margins. This government's doing something about our fuel price, fuel importer margins. That government talked about it, but did nothing. James Shaw. Um, to the Minister, what would have been the impact on low-income households of uh, international oil, um, uh, oil prices uh, and uh, the exchange rate uh, if the government had kept the previous government's tax cut policies in place and not put in place the family support package? Well, Mr Speaker, I think it's pretty clear that combination of circumstances, if, if we had lived to see... A, a point of order, the Honourable Jerry Browning. Uh, Mr Speaker, how on earth can this Minister make a comment on that, given that it is a totally hypothetical question and has been pointed out as such every time we've raised that issue on the side of the House? And, and hypothetical questions can be asked. They don't have to be answered. Mr Speaker, I think it would have been a disaster for low- and middle-income families to have had national, the national, former national government's tax cuts that went disproportionately to well-off households instead of the family's package and then an array of fuel tax increases that Simon Bridges was considering as Transport Minister at the time of the last election. Question number four, the Honourable Paul Goldsmith. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the